Hi friends! <laughs> Sorry if that was aggressive. Should I do that again? It comes with ups and downs and it can be hard. The past few months have been kind of rough, to be honest. We fall off track with God. We're not the warning signs that our spirit gives us. I didn't realize that I was slowly praying less, drained, to be honest. I'm ignoring the anxiety and it's so much worse. And that's where I, this is how we walk with him for the rest of our lives. We, God, my time with God can never be the thing to suffer. I miss you guys. I'm back. I just want to say hi. I did not fall off the face of the earth. I'm alive. I'm well. Um, <laughs> I didn't go MIA on purpose. So one, there's something on my heart I want to share, but also I want to have a little chat at the end because I haven't posted a video in a month and I kind of want to just talk, catch up a little bit, tell you what's to come. Um, there's so much I want to say, so much I want to share with you, and I plan to do more of that. I'm just trying to figure out the flow of making these videos and being a full-time parent and all the things. But I've been thinking about you all like every day, and I've been dying to get a video, I've been dying to talk to you, and there's so much I want to share with you, so let's talk. This past few months have been very, very busy for me, even with saying no to things and trying to find ways to slow down. Life just doesn't stop. <laughs> so I want to talk to you about that and what that looks like for our walk with God. And I don't want to just come on here and tell you all the things you should be doing and make it look like I have it all together or this is how it goes and this is what you do. And it's so easy and cookie cutter because it comes with ups and downs and it can be hard and staying on track, we really have to stay focused. And so I want to talk about that and what it's looked like for me because um, the past few months have been kind of rough, to be honest, I ain't going to lie. And yeah, I want to take you, I want to share my life with you and how to apply what I tell you guys and how I apply that in my own life. So with the busyness, a lot of times is where we fall off track with God. We're not reading as much. We're not praying as much. We are slowly drifting. We're not, we don't realize it, right? And so I want to talk about not ignoring the warning signs that our spirit gives us. Our body gives us warning signs to tell us that something is wrong. So whether you're dehydrated or sick or you have certain aches and pains, something is always saying something bigger. Our spirit is the same way. When you naturally want to isolate yourself, when you don't want to be around people, especially godly people, especially your church and your good friends or your loved ones, your family, or... When you're easily anxious and worried and fearful and um, quick to be tempered and low on patience and you start to feel that overwhelm of life, right? You start to worry about everything. All of those signs are telling us that we're not praying enough, that we're not reading enough, that we're not in the presence of God enough because God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That's what the word says. And so there, the word is filled with promises of God. It's filled with his character. It's filled with what this life with God consists of. So it's so important that we are taking that in to know when our life isn't aligning with that, to know when our feelings, our emotions, our mindset um, isn't aligning with that. And prayer, you know, when we are in the presence of God, it's where we give him our burdens. We give, we're not perfect, we're human. We're made with emotions and feelings and we see in the natural. Our goal is to stay focused on the supernatural and to see things eternally, but that's not how we're naturally made. That's not how we naturally see things. So it takes effort, it takes self-discipline, it takes being focused to say, Lord, show me what you see. I don't want to see in the natural. I don't want to see with my own eyes. I don't want to be so, you know, focused on what's in front of me. I don't wanna be so focused on my circumstances and the way I feel right now because I know that your word is true and I know you are good and I know you, I know you are faithful. And so it's being in his presence to say, I give you this worry, I give you this fear, I give you this burden that I've been trying to carry or I've been trying to solve. I give you this person, I give you this sickness, whatever it is, in his presence is when we do that. So. 
my brother said it the other day and it's so true. He said, almost all of our problems are a result of a lack of prayer. And it's so true. So all of these warning signs, um, I, I started to see them in my own life because I was so busy and I didn't realize that I was slowly praying less, reading less. I was on my phone more. Can I get an amen? And I was, you know, doing all these things. I was feeling on edge and I was feeling impatient and I was feeling frustrated, discouraged, um, down in certain areas, whatever it is, even um, blaming myself for things. And remember that the devil is an accuser. So if there's something in your mind constantly pointing the finger at everyone, even yourself for things that you can't control, the, for things that aren't your fault, and maybe they are your fault, and the Lord offers you grace and mercy, and he says, let me take it, let me help you. The devil says, you did that. You deserve to pay. You don't deserve this. You don't deserve that. It's your fault. That's the devil. Okay. And so when he wants to point the finger at everyone else, remember he's the accuser and that is not of God. And that's not for you. That was just a side note. So I'm starting to feel the weight. I'm starting to carry my own burdens. I'm starting to feel frustrated and discouraged. And I'm so drained, to be honest. I'm giving everything I have and I'm not taking the time to refill, to replenish, to give, to let God rejuvenate me. And it wasn't on purpose. I just, it's, you know, one thing leads to the next and you're so tired. And so I found myself just being like, Lord, like trying to pray and just not even having the words. And I just get so mentally exhausted, just like the mental overload. So I, I'm feeling, you know, the mental load. I'm feeling the weight. I'm, I'm getting easily, you know, worried or easily irritated or I'm low on patience, whatever. I mean, I'm low on mercy, grace, sympathy, empathy, whatever you want to call it. I'm low on all the things. <laughs> and I could feel it. I could feel the lack of prayer. I can feel the lack of reading. But you know what? I had to stop and ask myself, what am I doing different? What am I doing different than I was a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, when my life can still be difficult? There are still circumstances that I'm praying for or that I'm frustrated about or whatever, but it feels different when you're doing it with God versus trying to handle it on your own. So and I was reminded of the verse in Revelation when he says, you know, you're doing all the right things, but I have one complaint against you. You've lost your first love. It's not that part that gets me this time because I don't feel like I've lost my first love, but it's right after that. He says, go back to what you did at first. And so we need to constantly remember that, that God doesn't change. We do. So if we feel like we're drifting, if we feel like he's far, if we feel like, man, I had so much hope for this situation, but today I feel so hopeless about it, or I'm so discouraged, I'm so heavy, I'm so overwhelmed, I'm so anxious, I'm so fearful, whatever it is, we have to say, okay, what changed from where I was, right? Go back to what you did at first. And I started to think about it, and I realized that, it had been multiple days of me falling asleep without reading my Bible because I was so tired, but that's been like my guaranteed time to read my Bible is before I go to bed. I try to read it in the day, but that's usually my time that I for sure read it. It's like brushing my teeth. I was doing it every night and it had been multiple days and I had fallen asleep without reading. And then like I said, I was on my phone a little bit more. I wasn't praying as much like in the secret place. I was trying to pray throughout the day, but just not as much of that like intentional set aside time. And so one thing leads to another and we end up in this place where we're like, whoa, how did I get this far? 
And that happens from all the small things, you guys, from ignoring the signs, ignoring the anxiety, ignoring our irritability, ignoring the fact that we lack mercy, ignoring the fact that we want to isolate or we don't want to help in ministry anymore. We don't want to pray for people. We don't want to preach. We don't want to tell. Everything is work, right? Ignoring all of these signs that are saying, You need to reroute. You need to reprioritize. You need to get back in the presence of God. You need to make some adjustments here. And so I want to share that because it's so vital. Because if I don't realize it now, when it's been a few days or a week or a month, then a year goes by and it's so much worse. And that's where I was when I encountered God this last time. And so now he's showing me these patterns or these habits to not let it happen again. And I am so, so thankful and I'm so appreciative because this is how we walk with him for the rest of our lives. We learn and we grow and we stay in tune with him and we listen to him even when we're tired. And just remember, you guys, you choose your priorities. You choose what you have to do and what you get to do. Some might say, I have to clean my house so I can go do my workout. But others may say, I have to do my workout so that I can finish cleaning. Okay, which one's right? Whichever one you say is right. So I have to reprioritize. I have to readjust my life to say, if something else has to suffer, then that's fine. My relationship with God, my time with God can never be the thing to suffer. If my laundry has to suffer, if my house, if an outing or a service, whatever, anything extra that you're doing, if that has to suffer until you can kind of regroup or reprioritize or whatever it is, then so be it. But our time with God has to be non-negotiable. We have to realize how crucial it really is for our walk with God, for our survival, for our relationship. What relationship would be successful if you're constantly forgetting about that person, constantly ignoring that person, constantly too busy for that person, constantly giving them your leftovers? None. Time to regroup. It's time to reprioritize. I'm telling you from my own life, my own experience, and I'm saying that's what I'm doing. I'm saying, okay, I need to regroup here. It's too important to just ignore and say, when things slow down, we can't say, I'll do it when things slow down, right? Because it might be easy right now. It's in the middle of the holiday season. We say, oh, in January, I'll be back on my normal routine. In February, I'll be back on my, no, no. We're not talking about a diet here, okay? We're talking about a lifestyle, a relationship with God, the almighty God. And you guys, it's so much harder to do it without him. Like, like we, I think we work up in our minds that it's so hard to do it the right way and it's so hard to do it with God. But when you actually start doing it, it's so much easier because he does it all for you. It's just your job to be intentional, to spend time with him, which is so rewarding and so satisfying. But I know what it's like to be so tired and so drained that you're like, I can't even give him the time or effort that he deserves. I can't give him what I want to give him. And I've even been dealing with that the past couple months of like, you know, I've had times where I was praying And I literally didn't have any words in my mind for what to pray. Like I was trying to pray and I just, I had nothing. (laughs) So I was just like, Lord, help me, help me, help my family be with me today. Come with me, guide me, just be with me and help me. As simple as that. And I felt him intervene in that day and I felt him lift the weight and I felt him speak to me and it wasn't hours in prayer and doing all these things. It was just like, Lord, I know you're there and I need help. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm heavy. I feel, I know I need to pray, but I'm like too tired to pray. I'm too mentally exhausted. I've given everything and he'll meet you there and he'll fill you up. And he'll help you 
and he'll guide you and he'll fill in the gap. So if you're at that place, just say, Lord, help. What else? I just want to be honest with you guys. And it's not all easy and rainbows and butterflies, as you know, but social media can be very, um, what's the word? Social media can be very misleading and we all go through trials. We're all human. We all bleed. We all have mental battles. We all have, um, you know, things that come up, things that we're praying for, things that we're waiting for. I really feel like I'm in a waiting room right now. I'm waiting on a lot of things that I've been praying about, but we don't lose hope. And we stand firm on the word of God. And we know that he is true and he is a good father and a good father that wants to give his children gifts. And we are children of God. And he wants to help you and he is with you and he is for you. And even recently, like something, I got some news that normally probably would have really devastated me or just sent me in a loop of worry. And I was like, whatever, like, okay. (laughs) And I really felt that. I was like, if this is happening, God is in it. So whatever that looks like, it's going to be fine because he has our best interest in mind and I'm seeking him and I am asking him for help. and, and And I know that he's got me. So whatever. It is what it is. I don't know what he's going to do in it, but he's in it. Our story might look different than we think, but he's in it. Anyway, I'm probably going to finish there. Um, I want to do shorter, um, quick videos like this. This is probably longer than I expected, but I want to just do like random quick clips here and there, just sharing things that God speaks to me when he puts them on my heart. And I want to kind of do it like right when he does it. So I might be posting videos, you know, in my backyard, in my kitchen, in my car, whatever. I want to do more of that because there's so much I want to share with you. And there's just not enough time where it's like quiet or I'm alone or I'm ready in my room. (laughs) So, um, yeah, so I want to do more of that. What else? So anyway, let's just chat for a couple minutes. Um, I did not try to go MIA on purpose, like I said. I have multiple videos recording, and the next one I want to... Multiple videos recorded. I have multiple videos recorded, and the next video I'm I'm hopefully going to have done first is the book study, and it's chapters 7 and 8. And I have a very, very special guest I know you guys are going to love and I'm super excited about. So... I'm hoping to get that one up next and soon. And I have our vlog from our family prayer at my house from November. I'm going to get that to you. I have a couple other ones and I'm going to be working on more. I just really felt urgent to just get this one up. I'm going to try to just not even edit it at all. Just post it. I'm hoping to post it tonight. It is, what day is it? <laughs> day? Not it. It's December 4th. December 1st. My goodness. Okay. It's December 1st. Wow. Um, (laughs) I hope to have it up tonight. That's the goal. I just really wanted to say hi. I miss you guys. I pray for you guys. And I'm so thankful for this community. You all encourage me so, so much. And there's a lot more coming. Okay. I'm sorry I disappeared. But I know all of you will be like, it's okay, we understand, like you have a family. Everyone is so, so sweet and understanding and patient. And I really, really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. I put a lot of pressure on myself, but I appreciate that you guys are so understanding. Also, this sweatshirt, um, it's my new favorite sweatshirt. I've been wearing it like every day. I got it from the women's conference at my church from a really, really good friend of mine and like a mom in my life. And so I'm going to link it in the description because I love it. And I think it'd be a great gift. It's He Rose. Clever, right? I didn't even get it at first until she told me. And I was like, like, I didn't see the sweatshirt and know that's what it meant is what I mean. But I love that. And I've had people ask me like, what does that mean? And then you get to tell them. So it's also a great conversation starter. Um, But anyway, I love it. There's different color options and I'll link it for you. She's incredible and she deserves all the support. 
Um, yeah. Okay. My, the women's conference, that's another thing. I, um, I had a women's conference at my church last month, I guess now, because it was in November. And, um, I had the honor of speaking with my mother and my grandma, and we talked about generational blessing, generational curses, and we prayed for everyone. It was absolutely incredible. God totally showed up the whole weekend was amazing. And so I'm currently working on trying to get the video from my church so I can post it here for you guys so you can see um, the part where we spoke. And then also they recorded the prayer so you can pray that over your family as well. So I'm working on getting that to you. And I think that's all. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. Um, send it to someone if you know it will encourage them and let me know how you're doing. Say something in the comments. Um, I know I can't reply to every single one, but I really enjoyed reading them and I just, I love this community and there's a good amount of you where I recognize your faces and your names and you're always there to interact and I love that so much and I really appreciate it. All right. Well, there's more coming. I think that's all. See, I had notes in case I forget. All right, well, I gotta go get my kids up from their nap, but I will talk to you all soon. And yeah, okay. This is, I feel awkward, I don't know how to end this. But hopefully I wasn't too abrupt with my ending. I don't even know the last thing I had said. I don't know. All right. Well, this was fun. I'm glad we got to have a little chat and I will talk to you all soon. Bye. <laughs>